Praise the Lord, everybody. God is so good. And truly the Lord's mercy, it endures until the end. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews, the 12th chapter and the 28th verse, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken let us have grace by which we may serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear again i've taken for a subject matter keep your eyes on jesus let us pray father thank you so much for all that you have done Thank you today for your great mercy. Thank you for your great grace. Thank you for the word, hallelujah, that you have given us, God. The word that we can live by, God. The word that we can meditate on, God. The word that gives us light, Father. It lights our path. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So, Father, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you would anoint the message, Lord. And I pray that you would anoint the ears that hear, Father. I pray God, hallelujah, that your people would be edified and that you would be glorified. In the matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. There is one thing that has kept me, hallelujah, over the years, and that is the fact that God loves me. Therefore, you know, whatever comes my way, I know in advance that it has come from a loving God who has done so many great things for me. See, we must never forget what he has done because you know there is a balance scripture tells us in the um, book of ecclesiastes the third chapter in the first verse to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven there's a great message even in that scripture but for our purpose today we'll revisit it later but for our purpose today we're going to keep talking about keeping our eyes on Jesus because see there's a time in life that you have to look back and remember how God has brought you through remember that there's a time and a season for everything and God has purpose in what he allows in our life he can take a bad situation and he will turn that situation around for good just ask brother Joseph hallelujah his family turned against him sent him off into slavery he went through great trials and tribulation but the bible lets us know he never stopped trusting god he never stopped believing god hallelujah and even though he was in the prison god was with him he would say hallelujah even though he was in potiphar's house he'd let us know god was with him glory be to god and when the time and the season and the purpose was right God elevated Joseph for his glory and it ended up being a blessing for the people of God because when there was the famine in the land there was no more food there where his father and his brothers were the Bible lets us know that they came down to Egypt and look what God had right there waiting for them he had Joseph who he had prepared for that hour a season and a time and a purpose for everything so we as the people of God we must know that God is in control we must know that God knows everything about everything that is going on God is not surprised hallelujah about what goes on in this earth realm because he's the ruler and sustainer and the giver of all the Bible Bible lets us know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness therein. Hallelujah. God doesn't just sit back. God knows what's going on in the world that he created. He knows, hallelujah, what's going on in the lives of the people that he created. All things belong to God. Hallelujah. And he is a good father. He is a loving and a kind and a faithful father who will never leave us as the scripture says, nor will he forsake us. Hallelujah and he's going to take this what we have experienced and he's going to turn it around and I guarantee you he is going to use it for his glory hallelujah and I love how even when Jesus walked on this earth the son of God he is our great mediator he is our sustainer he is head of the church he is the one that loved us and gave his life for us and you know what Jesus said Jesus said in John the gospel of John the sixth chapter and the 39th verse this is the will of the father who sent me 
that all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up on the last day. We're living this life to live again. Hallelujah. We're living this life. Hallelujah. This is not our home. This earth is not our home. Yes, we have been given the earth. Hallelujah. God has given it to his children. But this is not our home. We are headed. Hallelujah. To better places in the future. Whenever Jesus decides to come back and get us, we're going to be ready to go. Glory be to God. But he said that God, all that the father has given him, he has lost none. Aren't you blessed? Hey, glory. Aren't you blessed to know that God, hallelujah, is able to keep you? Aren't you blessed to know that we are in good hands? It doesn't matter. Don't look to the right or to the left. Know that we are in good hands. Know that the Father loves us. Know that He gave heaven's best for us. He has invested so much in His people. We bless God for everything that he has done for us even in the midst of it we bless him because God will keep his promise we bless him because hallelujah we trust him we bless him and we keep our eyes on him in the midst of everything because no matter what we go through he is with us hallelujah and sometimes you know God may allow things into your life sometimes he uses it to get your attention but that does not mean that he stopped loving you the Lord just needs to get your attention the writer of the book of Hebrews it is debated who the writer is but we know that scripture says in 2nd Timothy the third chapter and the 16th verse all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness see we have a book a holy book hallelujah that is again a lamp to our feet and it is a light unto our path. But the Lord in this book of Hebrews, he wanted us to know that we have reasons to endure during discouraging times. There is no give up in a child of God. Just look at the great heroes of faith. And as we look, at the great heroes of faith in the Bible, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, for he said, for the joy that was set before him, even our Lord endured the cross. So we keep pressing forward. Hallelujah. And the Lord wanted us to know in this text that we are going to visit today that sometimes, you know, sin can weigh you down. Hallelujah. And it can hinder the race. See, the writer of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, took us into a race and he let us know that those that have already successfully completed the race were spectators he likened them to being spectators in heaven cheering us on and when you read the bible there are some amazing men and women who stood the test of time that endured and i think that's what the body needs to hear because it's been some months but we are those that endure we are those that don't break we are those hallelujah that keep trusting God we are those that know that we win the Bible declares that we have the victory in Christ Jesus so we know that the battle was already won we know that we have a loving God that is all powerful who controls all things over our life so we keep pressing on we keep going forward hallelujah and I want you to know that sometimes you know when we get into trouble um, because of things that we do, God, you know, is even merciful in in the times that, you know, we 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 do things that are not right. And even there are times when the Lord, you know, he has to chastise his people. But the beauty in this chastisement is knowing that whom the father chastens, he loves For those who are his children. I want you to know we are Christians who must be disciplined to run the race and at the leagues if you look at their lives since the writer of the text likened this to be in a race at the leagues train and they eat the right foods they don't go to mcdonald's you know they eat the right foods 
and athletes you know they probably don't get a chance to watch much tv not going to all these parties and all of these things because if they get caught by the coach they're going to be disciplined and even though we are experiencing a different season right now we cannot become so relaxed that we forget that we are still in the race. You never seen someone win sitting on the sidelines, have you? Have you ever gone? I used to run track when I was a young girl. I was the part of the four by four relay. I ran hundred yard dash and none of our competitors, none of them won the race that were sitting on the sideline. No, you had to be active and you can't drop the baton. That was the most important thing that we practiced during our practice time when we were running. We practiced passing the baton. If you drop the baton, guess what? You were going to lose. So we have to be Christians that are in this race that don't drop the baton. You know, it's been handed off to us from some great men and women, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ handed us the baton. Now what you going to do with it? <laughs> are you going to finish the race? Which brings me to my text today. Turn with me to the book again of Hebrews, the 12th chapter, and we will begin reading where we left off. Hebrews 12, I'm going to read um, verses 3 and 4. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin see these jewish christians were so discouraged because they started to experience significant social and economic persecution though not yet to shedding of blood even because see let me stop right here we know the one that shed the blood hallelujah we know whose blood was shed for our sin and that was the lord jesus hallelujah he's the one that had to endure that type of sacrifice. Even in difficult times, we can take courage knowing that we are following Jesus and he knows what we are going through. Hebrews 12, the fifth and the sixth verse declares, and you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons, my son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. Commentators have suggested that the Jewish Christians during the time that this text was written was discouraged again because they couldn't understand why God would allow trouble to arise. We must never forget that God again is in control and scripture says he speaks to us as sons. He treats us as his children. It is also said by commentators that only the most proud Christian would claim they never need correction from God. No one is above this kind of training. When you are training, I want you to know the coach will analyze your performance and he'll let you know which areas to correct and how to do so. Such is the father. He knows what areas in our lives you know, his children that need to be tightened up. Chastening should not be regarded as the only reason God allows difficult time, but it is an important one. We must be those that pray for wisdom in difficult times and keep our eyes on Jesus. Now let us say the grace together. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. I never 
want to close one of my videos without giving someone the opportunity to give their life to the Lord. You know, in the days and the hours and the time that we are living in now, it demands that you know who you are, who you belong to, and where you are going. And so I want to to give you the opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not heard the story, the Bible declares that we were all born sinners. It says over in the book of Romans, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that transpired back in the book of Genesis where Adam disobeyed God. And because of Adam's disobedience, sin and death entered into the world. And so Jesus, who was was God's sacrificial lamb because a price had to be paid for the sins of the world. So God sent in John 3 16, he says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that's what I want to give you the opportunity to do today, to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, to wash away all of your sins. Romans 10 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the Bible says you shall be saved. Romans 10 13 says, if you call on the name of the Lord, he will save you. So just repeat this prayer after me. Also, if you have walked away from the Lord, come on back home. Just say, Lord, I confess that I am a sinner. I'm sorry for the wrong that I have done. Please forgive me. I invite you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. I denounce Satan. I declare that Jesus is Lord. I believe that he died, that he was buried, and that he rose again. And now that I am your child, please fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If you have said that prayer, God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. Know today all of heaven is rejoicing because you have chosen to make Jesus your personal Lord and Savior. Welcome again to the family of God.